if they drop somebody unconscious, do they automatically, no matter what, give it a you know a double tap per per se? Are they gonna mm. are they gonna make sure to to kill something even even if it drops unconscious? Another really good point that we want to bring up and kind of give a shout out to these people is know what your monster is doing. So as an overlord, how, what is the tactics of your monsters? What is, you know, how do they go about if they drop somebody unconscious, do they automatically, no matter what, give it a, you know, a double tap per per se? Are they going to, mm. are they going to make sure to, to kill something even even if it drops unconscious, you know, if, if you're fighting something that's a very aggressive or um, malicious type creature and maybe you let it go one time. Yep. They dropped, they dropped this person unconscious. They're continuing through somebody re brought that character back up. I think I, I did this to you, Steve, in our, in our live play for extra life where, yeah. Either yeah. you, were, you were fighting a bunch of berserker hobgoblins and they dropped your character once they were moving on, but then somebody brought your character back up. You dealt a good damage to another one of those hobgoblins. I think you might've killed one of the other hobgoblins and the one hobgoblin turned around and was like, all right, knocked you unconscious and then chopped off your head and yeah. was like, that's it. I'm done with this person. This is how it's going to be. Mm. Yes, because they were fighting an intelligent enemy that mm-hmm. recognized I cannot leave a, even a wounded enemy behind me. Yep. Mm-hmm. That's another problem. Yeah. So I'm going to dispatch my foe yep. in the same way that probably the party would have dispatched the, the hobgoblins. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so that is something that you can do to certainly set the tone. Uh, for your for your combat, maybe do it to an NPC first. Right, exactly. Yeah, have it done to an NPC, been, or you know, nice to, uh, not have that happen. But you know, they come running in. You know, the hobgoblins come running into the village, and you just witness them cut a bunch of people down, and you know that okay, they're not here to just raid; they're here to kill people, yes. and that's how combat's going to go from that point forward. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Um, but the, the people that do, they have, there's a website out there. It's, uh, the monster knows what they are doing Yes, is, is the group that does this. We'll have, we'll make sure their link is below. I think it's just the monster knows.com, but yes, yeah. but we will, we'll set it up. And what they do for those people who may not be as well versed in like fantasy ideas of creatures, they go through and they explain this is the type of intelligence that this creature has. This is are they a packed animal? Animal are they not a pack animal? Um, and all of that really allows you to to a make a more in depth game in general because now you can get the mixtures of these different cultures in here. And and b now if you're fighting those creatures, you as a as an overlord can can go about all right. This is what I would want it to do because of this is how my combat, but this is what it would actually do because of what it knows. So yeah. it stops you also as an overlord because you can do this too, overlords, of metagaming. And it's not just a player issue. It's also an overlord issue. If not, it could be a bigger issue for you because you know stand for these accusations. <laughs> you know what everybody is capable of. But if your if your enemy doesn't know that this person's a paladin because they haven't done anything paladin oriented, they might not focus on them if they're a bunch of demons. You know what I mean? Like, yeah. Do they have a capability of detecting good or evil, or is your paladin even good? Who knows? Right? It, mm-hmm. Is is the creature intelligent enough to make a decision? We, you know, we made we made the creature the geodite, yes. and we said that the geodite is sort of like a, a rust monster in the fact that it, it senses out metals and mm-hmm. it desires to eat these metals. But the geodite is not evil it's not chaotic it, it, it's not it doesn't have plans it doesn't strategize it's yeah. not going to set up ambushes the geodite is going to go for the metal mm-hmm. and if you pre- if you try to get in its way it will hurt you 
to get the medal. Yep. Because it doesn't care about you. It just wants the medal. Correct. And yep. so when you're going to role play that, you know, it's important to know these things, to know how it's going to act. And that's what that website, the monster knows what they're doing. That That's what they do. They get into the really, okay, does this creature have an intelligent brain? Does this creature have, is it hardy? Is it mm-hmm. fast? And they, they try to tell you the best, you know, the most optimal ways that this creature would behave. Yeah. And if you, you know, if you watch, if you watch animals in, in nature, it's often said that animals take the path of least resistance, yep. but animals also know their advantages and they also play to those advantages. Yeah. Uh, one of the, one of the things that keeps like the leopard safe on the savanna is that it can pull its kill up into a tree. Exactly. It doesn't have to stay down on the ground and fight with the lions and the hyenas. It's mm-hmm. able to escape up the tree. Uh, so it's e using is, its yeah. ability. Yep. Yeah. It's using its ability to survive. And that's what you have to imagine that these, even though it's a fantasy setting that these monsters you're running into are going to behave like that. Now, if you're going to play a game like call of Cthulhu, well, that is a different story because the monsters are eldritch abominations from yeah. the nether of the beginning of worlds. And they, they just do whatever they want. Yeah. There's, there's <laughs> and, no rhyme or reason. Even, even if they want something from you, they're probably just going to drive you insane and then devour you before you know. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Exactly. So you should just be comforted with that thought. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> pretty much and there uh, is no glory in the void to our last point before we start wrapping up um and we've hit saying, it. i'm cut for time yeah we're cutting for time <laughs> um but to that to that last point and we've kind of hit it all the way through so it'll be a really quick point and then we'll get to wrap up it's the actions in combat not every action in combat needs to be an attack action or Mm -hmm. or an action to cast a spell it could be i need to perceive something i need to look at my character needs to see if this is what's happening because they might do this you know keep in mind i'm not saying you know every skill action is going to take a full a full turn of theirs but keep in mind that six seconds. Could they look at something, try and perceive it, and then still be able to to do something or tell their their fellow comrades? You know, there's there's all of those aspects. History is full of stories of soldiers on one side saying that they ran into soldiers on the other side and they ended up becoming friends or they ended up helping one another. Mm-hmm. So what happens if you're in a situation where there's a big melee and there's a big battle? And you find yourself alone with one of these enemies, one of these supposed enemies. Do you attack them every turn that you have just mindlessly? Or do you stop and say to your overlord, I would like to make an insight check to see if I can determine this person's intentions. To see if I think this person is good. Or if this person Mm -hmm. is faking the injury that they say that they have. Yeah. You know, you, you can, it doesn't have to just be, you know, (laughs) <laughs> let's just whack each other with swords until somebody's yeah, dead. Exactly. You know? yeah. There's, I mean, there's yeah. a lot more that can be done. And yeah. And even if you are in combat with that, with that creature or that enemy or whatever, it's like, if you can under, if you can figure out that that creature might have some intelligence and might not want to really fight or might, but that, like if you're, if you're at a disadvantage and you have maybe some way to bargain with that creature or, you know, some kind of like way mm-hmm. to trick them into thinking, you know, the situation is different Then you know, you can try to do that. Like that's an action that you can absolutely take during combat. You fight a red dragon, an ancient red dragon, and and it's kicking your party's ass. At some point, somebody in your group says, we surrender. We'll give you all of our stuff. We'll give you our gold. We'll worship you. We'll do whatever. The red dragon might take that offer. Yeah. Yeah. Because it plays up to what that red dragon wants. Exactly. (laughs) And it's the same thing when it comes to, uh, you, you, you with anything you you want to determine what's the motivation, yeah, for this creature or this combatant or or whatever. What's the what's the purpose of this combat? Yeah.